You heard the gossiping, you checked the rumors out, you started wondering what the heck it's all about. This thing called Hakapali, how on earth is that pronounced? Fins are what it's all about. Beyond Valor had some fins back when it first came out. In fighting withdrawal, they chased the Ruskies out. Are they overpowered? We will never quite find out till Haka Pale's out. Haka Pale's job's to flush the finish out and the three winter wars and what CCs are about. Historical Haka Pale is the 14th module. ASL's what it's all about. Said Finns or Italians when I pulled the counters out. It's a gray area, so I checked the forums out. It seems in Hakapale, a new color can't be found. Do I toss the old blue fins out? When AFV's rushing to throw the clutarks out. Oh, <laughs> cause I'm sledding that dance and I found out. These toys in Hakapale like the fan sleds to get about are what it's all about. You turned your playtests in, you filled the forms all out. That was decades ago, getting printed is in doubt. I want the Hakapale, MMP, please put it out. And end the ASL drought. You put your order in, you took your wallet out. You put your card number in, and printed the receipt out. You pre-ordered Hakapale, and in a day or thereabouts, levels reached, MMP did tout. At Winter Offensive, some great news did get out. Chess did some Facebook again, and he got the updates out. He did some Hocus Pocus, and he got the module out! It's finished and finally out! Let's order ha Capale! Let's order! Hey everybody, welcome to the Two Half Squads. I'm Jeff. And I'm Dave. And that, uh, Hi Dave, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Jeff. <laughs> oh, there he is. We yes. fooled you all. I'm over here. That was Mike. You guys are so easily fooled and it's not even April Fool's. No, instead, what day is it, everyone? Uh, Eclipse Day. Eclipse Day, that's right. Mm-hmm. I knew there was something important that went on today. That was kind of a fun day, Eclipse Day. Yes, how was your eclipse, Mike? It was fine. This is Mike Rizzi, noted Chicago war gamer. That's right. And this is the Two Half Squads, the one and only podcast dedicated 100% in the world to 100% to the greatest game in the world, Advanced Squad Leader. Advanced Squad Leader. Sit back, relax. For the next hour, we will control your environment. We're going to the outer limits, and today it was like the outer limits. It, it was pretty spectacular. I, I didn't know what to expect. What do really. you think, Mike? I it was eerie for a moment. We yeah. had, but only a moment because we were off center a bit, right? So we didn't get yeah. the total effect. But it was enough. Some of our neighbors actually said they felt a little nauseous. So really, yeah. From what? Double gravity. Yeah. Really. Tidal, like, tidal effects. Tidal effects. Brain swelling. <laughs> Alien germs. I, I hadn't heard that. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's a little much. I didn't feel that. Of course, I, I had a glass of scotch with mine. So we had the eclipse around here. It came into 94%. We got 94%. And that's not good enough for you. Is that right, Mike? That's 94% just, yeah. is nope, not good enough. That's right. <laughs> Boy, you are tough. This is a tough crowd. It's an A minus, right? Yeah, it's, well, that's true. Yeah. Like that. yeah. At 207 was the as close as we got to totality yes that was it's i was expecting the whole thing to be faster mm -hmm. it, it was, was long it was long yeah and and what's interesting what i thought was interesting is that you get to the maximum 94 percent for for the people that saw totality 
and then it's not over. You don't go home, right? Because it slowly then works its way works out. its way yes. the other way. So you can sit there and have another drink if you're <laughs> doing that. Yes. Yep. What'd you do, Dave? So we were going to, as I texted at the last minute, hey, we might cancel the show tonight, and I'll get to Toledo, Ohio, and see it at Graham's house and stay overnight and drive home tomorrow. Four and a half hours. And then we were worried about the traffic and the yeah. weather, so we yeah. monitored it all the time. Checking the traffic, the weather. <clears throat> traffic was only like half an hour longer. Oh. But partly cloudy was enough to say. We just called it. You had to look at it. Either way is good. If I stay here, I'll see it here. There'll be a partial. And we can go out on the kayaks and see it out on the lake to start, drive home. Some neighbors walking by came by, sat with us, one of them, and and then we get to record. Yeah. So, so it turned out good. Until yeah. my grandma just sent my mother in law yes. <laughs> just sent an email. What was the heading on Spectacular. That? You missed it. Yeah, you the missed. skies were clear. Oh, you really missed it. Life changing. We're all <laughs> 50 years younger here now. It was a miracle. If we missed that on superpowers, yeah, there's going to be. Yeah, that would be bad. Yes, that would be bad. That's a good point. They said that you you know, should watch the animals. It said, be careful because your dogs might become confused or your cat will be, might get surly. Right. Well, yeah. Well, ours didn't get dark enough to have. A full effect, but it, it got dimmer, and I took two photos one at 80, not 94 percent, and mm -hmm. one at normal sun. And it, they are both different, yeah. So, <clears throat> definitely, so, and it got colder. So, right? that's Did proof you? that it actually occurred. Well, yeah, and it's our, not just our, your, our birds, not just were, hearsay. our birds were the same, about the same. I call well, <laughs> our dog is always surly, as Jeff. Oh, yeah. So, was, we, yeah. we, we, we couldn't, you know, you couldn't tell, couldn't tell. Hardly interesting. Let's get on to interesting stuff like advanced squad leader. Like I went to Europe and so I won't, you know, Amsterdam, art museums, people on bicycles everywhere. <laughs> you haven't been there. It, it's insane. And then I was trying to, as I told you, I was trying to step off the curb and yield to them, but I don't yield to them. Pedestrians have the right away. Mm -hmm. So as I start to step off, she slows down. There's like eight cyclists behind her coming all around this corner, just not related, just all going to work or to the store. And then they, she starts to slow and they slow. And then I step back, you know, being like, Oh, I, I got to yield. And then Laura steps forward. And I, so I step forward with her. That's right. We have right away. So we step forward and then they slow down again. And then I just grab Laura and push her back. We step back and then she speeds up again. <laughs> she goes by me and says, you have right of way. Don't doubt. <laughs> and so that was saying, stop being wishy-washy. Just yeah. walk across the street. Well, that's because you were born in indecisive Vienna. <laughs> yeah. Gary, indecisive Vienna. I don't trust any vehicle coming toward me. Yeah. I, uh, I, at U of I, when I went there many years ago, they bicycling was a huge thing for the Get around campus and i i was hit twice so i'm not sure were yes now the, the people weren't going that fast and when i saw them <clears throat> one of them i saw coming so i kind of leaned into him and <laughs> no but uh yeah twice ne neither one was serious okay it makes me very skittish about that stuff yeah so i need to be careful when i go to europe right well, we had um, also then hit Berlin. It was pretty standard run for, you know, everyone would know the Holocaust Memorial and the wall and the Reichstag. And uh, I think what was unique was getting to Budapest and then getting to the thing that ASLers care about is the hexes that I went to <laughs> on the Buda, Budapest Festum map. So... For those of you who are not watching Dave visually, he is holding up a map and pointing at things. That's right. I'll post some photos. Um, but the Cogwe Railway, so you came in on this tram right down the road, and I was, saw all these houses that I was defending over here in several scenarios. Walked around the back, got a picture of the white woods back here. Did you advance into any of the buildings? I did a lot, yes. Did you really? Indeed, yes. Yeah. No, we couldn't go in. Oh. They were not doing rides on the railway, which I didn't care about anyway, or host oh. were like, 
we're so sad you can't ride it. I'm like, I don't care about that. I want to walk around here, see all these buildings. And this building is particularly still popped with bullet holes and shrapnel. This is hex G17. And it is right there by G18, the viaduct. We went under the viaduct, got a picture there. This is Voros Major Park, all down in here. Did you try dashing across the street anywhere? I did, and I got hit by a cyclist. Hit by a cyclist, yeah. Okay, that's where that <laughs> happened. And okay. the infamous tennis courts, J32. <clears throat> yes. Still there today. It is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's there. These buildings are there. I was a little confused on these buildings in M and Petro L, but E was all the same. And then there was larger buildings in other sectors. But, well, that's kind of amazing, really. Yeah. And our host enjoyed watching me get so into it going, wait, there should be a building behind this building that's taller because my friend had a machine gun up. Oh, yes, there. He was up there wearing his machine gun down and I had to come down the street through the viaduct and all that. And so they thought it was pretty kind of cool in a way because they were like, so that's real history that happened here. Well, in general, yes, right? Yeah. So that yeah. was cool. Yeah, very cool. Yep, Arnhem, Nijmegen, but you know, I think all of our listeners have been there. Arnhem's all destroyed. Underneath, it's not the same buildings are out there. Right. Oh, you know, they've redone everything, rebuilt. It's everything. empty. Everything got bombed. Oh. Out. Yeah, it's empty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised Budapest didn't get completely it did. bombed out, but I don't know that much about it. I've got to read the book, I guess. Oh, it did. And the other thing was up on yeah. Castle Hill, which I hadn't played any scenarios from there yet, but we went there. They're rebuilding everything and fixing it up, and they have pictures on the side of the chain link fence. You know, holding you back from going in the construction site. Yeah. Showing um, what it looked like in the war and what it, artists tradition of what it's going to look like. Wow. Which really then matched the way it did look before the war. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. they're going to rebuild it the same. Yeah. Yep. Putting a lot of money into that. But anywhere you go in Budapest, there's damage all around. All around. You can have one nice hotel, it's redone. In the middle, there's bullet holes all over. <laughs> and then the next next part of the building has been redone. Yeah. Hmm. Really? Just rant, yeah, rant anywhere. Anywhere. That's so, wild. I'm thinking like the Soviets didn't put a lot of money into it after they destroyed it and took it over. Yeah. I mean, Probably. Berlin yeah. looked all fixed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're so cute. I think Budapest is behind in the fix the war damage. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Maybe I was in the wrong part of Germany, but yeah, this is downtown Budapest. Yeah. So right, all around. Still, that's pretty yeah. cool that you that you saw the actual buildings that you've played. Yeah. Around and then got into Spain. My family right. got me into a gondola, taking me up to a mountaintop in Picos. If anyone's been there, it's a crazy cool. Hiked all over. So Spain was like the hiking, nature hiking part, mm. mostly. And seeing mm -hmm. Aaron, my son's places at school, places, that, friends that he still has there, met him for meals and things as we went around via the lead or in say and so on. And that's nice. it. And your you, flights there and back, the doors stayed on and uh, all that. <laughs> they did stay on. Engines stayed attached to the planes. They did. Were, did you fly in a Boeing plane? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm not that sure, but you didn't check. No. Yeah. So okay. was that your first visit to a World War II? Yes. 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 Right. I had done Spain. Brit well, I did London, Scotland. But yeah. Yeah. No. Continent. But something where they're at, you know, when you're seeing bullet yeah, holes and walls. First time. Yeah. So it, it makes you appreciate the the maps, right? You know, I mean, the idea that now you you get a sense of those ranges and oh, the yeah. distances. And, you know, it, it, it transforms your ideas about it. it well, know, in a sense, you yes. know, you get an idea of what you're yes. recreating. Yeah. And and thinking like, oh, that's the distance. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 40 meters or something. In right. The yeah. So, right. Yeah. It is about like that, that, that building fit about there. And that right. bridge, I didn't realize was that close. Underpass. In my brain, it was further away. 
and then I got I looked at the map again on my phone and back here at home. It is that close. Yeah. So I was remembering being in a different building shooting down the road at it. Mm-hmm. And but it is by that building. Things like that. And again, the yeah. levels are pretty accurate. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that's higher than that building. And you can visualize the line of sight by drawing your finger yeah. through the air, <laughs> which is my friend told me it's illegal. You can't do it on the ASL map. You can't draw your finger across. That's pre Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> I could draw my finger. Look at that. Right over that building. You can hit those hexes. Yeah, cool. Got to yeah. do that. It's on my list. We should probably take a moment and remember uh, Dean Essig, who passed away recently. Was it last week? I think it was last, it was last week. week. Yep, that's right. Yeah, because yeah, Dave was in Europe. Yeah, which I actually did not even know. How do, how did you get informed? How were you informed? Uh, on the MMP site. You know, oh, they've, okay. been, they've been keeping everybody updated. Oh, okay. I haven't so, actually been on the site. Yeah, right. Um. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I don't know much about yeah. Dean other than his name is. Right, right. He became legendary. associated with MMP later, of course, when he sold, you know, his company, the Gamers, to MMP. But for oh, all, yeah. for those of us way back, yeah, gamers. you know, the Gamers was revolutionary in game design and for a couple of reasons, right? As, as from a personality point of view, uh, it was very unique because they were the first company. This was pre-internet, right? Late 80s. Uh, you know, his phone number was right on the box. And you would call, you know, with questions and wow and issues as they arose during a game. And, you know, oftentimes they'd pick up the phone when you called. So wow. it was an answering machine too, but, you know, it was unheard of to yeah. have somebody, you know, a designer and then pick it up, you know, as friendly. And then, of course, also the model of the company, you know, you'd call him, you know, you'd call his wife and order the games directly as you were waiting for them to come out. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, from a consumer relations perspective, you know, it was a very unique model, you know, had a, a big following, I think, in part because of that, that personal touch. Yeah. You know, you felt like you really knew them, even though you might only encounter them if you went to a convention in the 90s, you know, back then. Those were my convention days. So my encounters with them personally was just at the, you know, the booths at Origins or the other board game conventions of the era. But, um, and I never, you know, be, even though we're Midwesterners, I never had an opportunity to go to HomerCon, which was, you know, their, their headquarters was there and they would hold that annual game convention. Um, and a lot of people have fond memories of that, you know, I know uh, I never got to go. But from a game design perspective, of course, Dean's big thing was that, you know, he incorporated these elements that added that bit of we would want to say realism to it, almost a role playing aspect, like, you know, it's, the Civil War Brigade series, of course, is the one that people think of most because you actually write the orders as if you were the general. You know? Oh, so yes. That whole idea of, uh, you know, you're limited to what your units are going to do based on the way the orders are sent. Same applies, to, of course, to the OCS, the operational series, where you actually have to have the supplies in order to make the things move and go, you know. So there's that limitation. You know, we can only keep running these units as far as we have the ability to do so. And this, the closest ASL would be uh, the uh, battalion series or the, the tactical combat series, which had battalions and platoons as counters. And so you would um, have to write on an operation, on a sort of a tactical operational map, you know, like this is the attack force, this is the security force, these are the defensive forces, mm-hmm. you know, you would, as if you were a staff officer who was, uh, you know, uh, planning these operations at a smaller scale. Right. So in all, in all of these wow. things, you know, it, it imbued this sense of doing the job that the person you're sitting in for would be doing, right? You know, whether it's army general in the civil war, writing orders, you know, staff officer, you know, planning these little map movements or, you know, the sort of operational level uh, Which logistics. Me, that, I mean, that sounds great. I don't know how it is in execution because I've never played one of those games, but it, right. but I love the, the idea of it. Yeah, yeah, they're all, the you know, they were all very, you know, it, nothing had done been done like that before. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, groundbreaking. very groundbreaking. <laughs> yes. And successful. Yes, exactly. But so. they sold to MMP at some point or MMP acquired them? At some yeah, point at some they... point, I believe it was around 2000 in that era as MMP had acquired ASL and, you know, was growing as a company. Um, 
Dean had a relationship with him and sold the company because he wanted to, you know, running the gamers was a full time job, let alone becoming, you know, game designer, developing games, all the new systems he wanted to work on. And uh, that, you know, he was able to devote all of his time to game design. Well, well, our condolences and to the families and yeah, we'll have to uh, play something in his honor. That's something. Yes. So that means it's time for letters. Okay. You want to start? Yes, but first I'd like to thank John Bulla for continued Patreon support and David Hassler, RWDPGH, and Kevin Mellon, Chris Hatch, Retro BB, and Mr. Kirk for subscribing to us on YouTube. Thank you. I have this letter from Alan in Scotland. Our good friend Alan, who writes us often, and uh, always good to hear from him. What did he say? He said, I just looked and saw the new episode is up. Cool. I'll look forward to hearing your opinion of Twilight of the Reich. My copy's on its way to Ali in Kupar, even as we speak. Second Chance Games. Shipped it the other day. I look forward to hearing your views on the LFT board controversy. I'm not at all sure what it's about. And we did talk about that, right, before. A little bit, though we don't know what the controversy exactly was. But yeah, there was something going on. No, I don't don't know the details. Okay. It would be absolutely awesome if LFT did more with this board idea and produced their own set, official winter Pacific boards with the new artwork based on MMP boards. You know, I'm always a fan to have more winter boards. Found to be pretty expensive, but I would love it if they would make something like that. I have the latest LFT issue on order from Xavier. I ordered it direct from him before I saw Second Chance Games had it, but haven't paid for it yet. As Xavier said, to wait till he actually has these issues in stock. So it'll be a couple of weeks yet, I think. I enjoyed the last episode with the guys from Advancing Fire. It was very interesting to hear about their projects. Me and the guys are finishing our packing. We're almost ready for Heroes down in Blackpool. That's the tournament there, right? On the gaming weekends? Yes. Do you know if the rumors I have heard are true in the next ASL journal going to be Twilight of the Reich-themed issue? That would be cool. We'll have to wait and see. Well, I guess... I best go and make my lunch and let you get on with your day, signed Alan. So I don't know. What is the next journal going to be? We don't know. No. I haven't heard any rumors. Do we? But have... I, I haven't had my ear to the, to the, to the ground. <laughs> yes. Is that where you put it? That's, the, that's how could. it's traditional. Where should I stick my ear? To the ground? Yes. Okay. Jeff, you have a letter there? I do have a letter here. But before we do that, I, I just want to say uh, cheers to everybody. Clink and drink. Cheers. Oh. Drinking out of our little drink, <laughs> and uh, or as they say in Finland, tussle in the tundra, cuppus, capus, coppers, cuppus, cuppus, cuppus. I just looked it up. We, we were doing meticulous research at this point. Oh, here, oh, Google, Google left it. Um, well, cheers, cheers, <laughs> good enough. I've got a letter here from Dan in Vancouver, which is in Canada. So this is an international letter. I'll try to read it in a Canadian accent. No, I won't. Mm-hmm. He's uh, writing in regarding uh, uh, regarding the episode with the advancing fire guys. And he said, I like their enthusiasm and glad they didn't get discouraged as they went up the learning curve on game publishing. Very excited to hear Brevity Assault is going to be republished because I missed it the first time. Thank you for interviewing them. Or You're as welcome. they say in Italy, grazie. You're welcome. Mike, why don't you take the next letter? All right. Hey, fellas, please enter me in the contest. We had our West Coast Melee Tournament last weekend in Racho Cucamonga. Come on. That's Gotta not a real place. place. That's gonna, not a real gonna, place. You've never Rancho been? Racho Cucamonga? <laughs> yeah, I've never been. <laughs> Sorry. And I, I, I apologize to everybody from Rancho Cucamonga. Okay. It was awesome, but I lost all my games. Oh. Doesn't matter, though. I always have fun, no matter the outcome. 
One scenario, death at the cement plant, ASLJ203. Actually came down to one last roll of the dice. Always fun. Oh, I saw a guy with a two half squads t-shirt. Oh, what? yes. Woo. And no pants. Probably. I don't, why don't I have a two half squads t-shirt? Because we ran out before you well, one. All right. They can make more. Right? Yeah, you could. I'll knit, well, I'll knit you one. <laughs> yes. Anyway, thanks, guys. I usually listen to the podcast, but I like the box art review of Twilight of the Right. It's a cool painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although the position of the tank's turret next to some trim on a building's facade looks kind of strange, like it's the gun barrel. Yes, I noticed it. At, well, of course, yeah. he pointed it out, and it is true. It's kind of like a subject merger when mm -hmm. two things in the photo kind of merge together. Well, maybe that's just me, but apparently not. Mm -hmm. The song was so good, I ran was totally cool. And we hope you liked today's song. Do the hakapaki and you turn yourself around. Hakapali. Yes. Uh, but hello from Echo Park in LA. Keep up the fine work on the one who's going to Europe. I hope they have a wonderful time. Sincerely yours in ASL, Robert Barat. Thanks, Robert. And I Thank did, you, Robert. as you heard, I had a wonderful time. Jeff, you want to take the next one? You know that I, I ran song was funny because you played it for me and it, it's been a few years and Dave said who's singing and I said I was listening to it and I thought that sounds kind of like Aaron but he's he's flat in a couple of spots I think I'd like to tr take a whack at it because I think I could do better <laughs> well and then turns out it was me singing it I, think, ah, which yeah. I, totally, <laughs> I did not know I did I got no memory of it right wow none whatsoever. there is something seriously wrong with my brain uh, here's a letter from E.T. Yonkins. Once again, I wanted to pass along kudos for the recent shows and interviews. Did you get your kudos? I did. did Thank you. I mm -hmm. know. Okay. Well, okay, we'll make sure you got some. I do listen to a lot of the older shows for rules refreshers. I did that too the other day, actually. Oh. Uh, found the show where I did a little segment on interdiction to clarify a rule. That I had. And that was actually Time useful. Stamps are on there. Yeah, that was actually useful. Uh, I was wondering if you ever did a show specifically on motorcycles, trucks, wagons, sleds, sledges, or weather in general to include in ski and, and include ski use. I, have we done I had that? searched those topics and they didn't pop up in there. Yeah, really? I don't have a memory of it, but I don't have a memory of a lot. Yeah. Remember, I remember a lot of things I, I never did, and I yes. don't remember a lot of things I did do. Yeah. So it's hard to say. I heard a good saying the other day. Somebody said, I change my mind all the time and I'm never wrong. I like the review of Partisan. Part of me thinks Again, that, there you go. that part and rules of Partisan may not be the strongest in the system. Frankly, not all Partisan units probably deserved a three firepower, a three range, and an underscored seven morale. Further from what I understand, given a Partisan's lack of fire and noise discipline, I'm not sure they all ought to be stealthy either. Right, Mike. That's, I thought that was kind of a good point. But yeah, yeah, right. I think the stealthy comes from knowing the local terrain. Yes. Yeah, right. Knowing but, how where to hide. And, but yeah, yeah. But that's a point. Or not, yeah. You know, that's trained troops. But that's part of the rules uh, that are probably be past being changed at this time. Also, can we bring back the typewriter song for letters? Maybe sometime. Yeah, we could try that and see if it passes through, uh, if YouTube will let us do that. But again, great job on the show. I'm looking forward to more to come. Love. Um, PT. I, I added love. <laughs> I, I think there have been partisan scenarios somewhere where they've SSR'd out the stealth. Uh, yes. Probably. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And some troops are five two sevens. Probably in Holland because they have those wooden shoes. <laughs> yes. And it's very hard to be stealthy. Yeah, I didn't see any Lowe's in Amsterdam. Oh. You didn't? Nope. No. You and you didn't buy a pair. Nope. But you know what time it is now? No. What? You've been <laughs> playing. <laughs> lately. Playing lately. <laughs> What's in what you've been playing lately? What you been playing lately? <laughs> I'll take that scenario right there. This one here? Well, Mike Rizzi and I yes. have started Woodland Pursuit. Speaking of partisans. You remember it? Did you like it, Mike, or so far? Oh, yeah. So we're, we're, we're barely into it, really. 
But what's cool about it? It's got lots of partisans. <laughs> it always makes it cool. What about dogs? It has Do dogs, yes. It oh, has it does. Dogs. It's got dogs? Not a counter. But Not a counter, but a oh. rule. two of the units have anti-partisan sniffing capabilities. Are they King Charles Spaniels? Uh, no. Oh, Though man. they should be. They should be. I mean, by your experience, you would think so. Yes, yeah. I understand. But because they bark. Yes. At least yours barks. At you. At so me. you're a partisan. So I, it wouldn't, yeah, it, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, yes. But anyway, it, it unconceals the units. How'd you, uh, how'd you pick this scenario? I, we just quickly picked one. Yeah, yeah. I like the Grumble Jones pack. And yeah, we're okay. going to do our drawing for that next. Yeah. So um, just grab this one. We thought it could fit into a one or two session game. Yes. Yeah. And who's partisan? You're the, I'm the uh, partisan. Mike is partisan. Yeah. And he's all concealed. And then like he has to pop up and he move quickly, very quickly. Initially, he's got to get off the board. Off the board, yeah. Um, and he, he can search buildings for supplies. And I can search him first. And so he really surprised me by moving so quickly. I didn't realize they moved. They only paid a one and a half for woods. One and a half in the woods, yeah. Well, I'm like, oh no, he's cheating, but I don't want to say anything. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say you're a cheater. Or well, yeah. Okay, you can move one and a half in the woods because you're my friend. And yeah. then I realized it's in the rules. Ah. So and I'm sorry, I kind of blew through that. What do the dogs do for you? They help you search. I have to move no, them. They, if they move adjacent to the partisans that are concealed, it unconceals them. Or hidden. Oh. Or hidden if because I actually all the partisans are hit, even though they're the ones that are maneuvering to get off the board. Yeah. They start they hip. Start hip. Okay. And then you kind of surprise. I'm so the Germans have the dogs. Yeah. The Germans okay. have like two squads. That's right. Okay. And they're kind of so I'm using I'm a little them slow in a spot to turn up some concealment and and then I think I I'm falling back okay. I can put mm -hmm. a picture of the current game up and um well you opted to go and root out those supplies in the building. <laughs> I spent so, some time searching these buildings. Yeah. Because I can take away his supplies or he can pop up with a partisan because all the partisans start low ammo so oh i see yeah. Yeah. oh interesting so yeah. see and that's why i thought that mm -hmm. that uh kermit mullins did a good job of getting on these fun little gaming rules and as i mentioned when we did the review of all these scenarios a couple shows ago so, yeah yeah but i have a picture i'll put it up it's on oh, i didn't put it on twitter yet either but mm -hmm. well, i don't know if it's worth talking about what mike and i played it or, is it is because is is you've been playing something lately. we have right and uh, Mike came up with this great idea. We, we kind of wanted to refresh ourselves. You know how some people reread the rule book every year? I, I really need to do that. And, but I didn't want to do that. And Mike said, let's just start from, let's start basic. So, so, we so you back pick to the Pacific with caves and yeah. air support yeah. and paratroopers? <laughs> yes. That's and right. I ran. No. Uh, no, we, Mike said, let's start with the starter kit. Starter kit scenarios. Starter kit We're playing yeah. full rules, and we just thought, yeah. oh, "What the heck?" To play full rules and get the, get the starter kit scenarios. So we've been through two of them, and it's been good. It's and coming I, back to you. It's coming back yeah. to me. Yeah, because I I had taken a break from the game for a little bit. So. Uh, who won? Uh, I don't know if that's important. Jeff can say it's very important. <laughs> Mike won both times. Yeah. 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 Well, I was I did some I did some dumb things, and I would didn't there I will blame it on the dice. Jeff does that on purpose because yeah. he likes to let people win. <laughs> yeah, but it's been very fun, so we'll keep you up to date. And I'm sure we'll branch out into some other things and have more to report in the near future. Yeah, I'd consider taking one of our Wednesday Star Wars nights and making it a passel again. Yeah, we could yeah, do we that. We can do that. Play short, quick games once a month and invite back some of the gentlemen who yeah. may, may not care about us anymore. But So that's what we've been playing lately. All right, and now it's time for drawing our winner of the Grumble Jones pack volume number one. The entire thing? The entire thing. Wow. Included is the scenario just discussed by us. And we have a we have ten entrants into the contest, and Jeff is going to roll a die. I'm going to roll a d10. This is from RollAdvantage.com. Thank you, thanks to them for this. I won't show you the. I won't bother showing you the screen. No. I'll just quick roll here. I, I got a d10 loaded up. Roll. 
And the final result is 12. No, it's five. One, two, three, four, five. Dave Grennan. Dave, you are the winner of the Grumbly Jones pack. Send this is your address. lucky we'll day. That right out to you. And then our next contest is what do we have, Mike? Coming Show the next. studio audience what we have, Mike. A lovely schwerpunkt. punk. And was this for two schwerpunks? For both schwerpunks? We, we're out of, we only have one left, and that's 12. But we okay. do have another wow. product to put with it. As a bonus. Ah, as a really bonus. Great really point. Starter kit, special study two. Now, probably you two want to keep that and then try playing those two. But yes, you yes, can't, right? You're going to give it away, aren't you? Yeah. So whoever joins this contest can keep the square punk if you're an experienced gamer, give away the starter kit to a beginner friend or vice versa. Great way to meet people is give them a starter kit or scenario pack. Absolutely is. Or keep them both for yourself or sell them on eBay. I think they go for $58. Each. And then send the money to charity. Yes. So send us. Send us an email. Send us rally point and square punk. How about send us an email with the subject line saying, Point and punked. Point and punked. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Point and punked. It's April. It's April 8th today. This will go <clears> out <throat> by the teens. It's April, April 30th, 30th, huh? You yeah. think that's too long? No. April 30th. April 30th. Get that done. 30 days or, half April. Or May Day. We'll take it by May Day, May 1st. Okay. Right. We'll be recording it right around then, I right. hope. There might only be one show this month. And if it's later, you know, if you do send it in and it's later than May Day, just if you slip us 10 bucks, we can be bought. And if you really want to win, slip us 20. We'll make sure the dice rolls in your favor. Rizzy, of, Rizzy can't do that. You can't participate no. in that because you are I know. A, now an employee. Officer of the court right. or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, the two F squads is brought to you by Bounty Fire Productions, maker of fine ASL products, available at their website. We have the link posted there. They have a new product coming out, which is yes, coming soon from Bounty Fire. Bitterest Day. Bitterest Day sends players into Okinawa, fighting through the mountainous terrain. It includes nine action pack scenarios, one full sheet of counters depicting more units, weapons, vehicles, and planes that are depicted in the scenarios, and one historical ASL map sheet, which represents the historical situation in Okinawa. So that should be fantastic. We're looking forward to yeah. that, Yep, that happens. Certainly are. But... So go to bountyfire.com, learn more. And now it's time for rules. It's time for rules. You need the rules to play the game and put your opponents to shame. They might seem hard, but that's okay. We're gonna learn them anyway. Rules. rules. All righty, it's quiz show. Oh, well, dang. it's rules show. As a quiz show. So, the first question, gentlemen, you don't have to ring in. Does Italian ordinance? Oh, today we're doing the Italians and okay. the Finnish mm -hmm. in honor of our song. Do the hot poly and turn, turn yourself, yourself around. around. Does Italian ordinance use the red or black to hit numbers? Yes. <laughs> no, that was an and/or question. <laughs> I will say red. Red is correct, Mike. I'll say black then. Not to be contrary, but black is wrong. Okay. So. Elite squads. What are the statistics on the elite squads and half squads? Uh, firepower, range, morale. Elite Italians? Mm -hmm. Squads. Mm -hmm. And half squads. Well, and half squads? You're, you're, you're asking a lot. lot. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Um, I would put on my thinking cap, but I don't want to mess up my good coiffure. All right, let me think. Um, I'll let Jeff think. No, you can go. <laughs> five. I don't, I don't remember I've been. Okay. Five, six, eight. No. I'm going to say Italian. Italians. I'm going to say. Oh, a, oh this sorry. Is, this is a, five. Yeah. <laughs> Did I get that right? Okay, this is in the days before LFT put yes, out the right. magazine exactly. with the, all the, the upgraded classic, Italian right. troops that mm -hmm. they felt 
are more realistic. Yeah. I will say four, four, eight. Oh, lower on the last one. Seven. Four, four, seven. Right. And their half squads, Jeff, are two, four, sixes. You can look at me while sevens? I give you the answers. Oh, you're giving me the answers. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're giving me the answers right on the right on the screen there. <laughs> and the crews are two two sevens. And now question. May the first line Italians, may they deploy. I know it's been a long time it's, since we played yes, Italian. It is. It but also, <clears throat> may they deploy. I will say yes. I'll say no. Jeff is correct. It's a Ooh. no. Well done. May the elite Italian squads deploy. Yes. I'll say yes. It's a no. It's a no. Wow. Okay. Wow. It has been a long time. They can't deploy, but <laughs> there are exceptions to deploying. Now, I think you're going to remember these from Rich Bilkey. What are the except when okay? So the Russians can't deploy either. So right. what, what are those cases when they can? Splitting when you get a prisoner. That's one. The other is when yes. the, the squad shoots the other half of the squad in their own squad, and then they're now a half squad. Ah, uh, yes. Right. Oh, they've deployed. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's considered deployment? Yeah. Okay. You just declare that they're committing harakiri <laughs> on half the squad. <laughs> And then it's down to it. It's when it's when you want to take a tank, uh, become a crew in a tank. You can jump in. Ah, uh, yeah. You can split. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. Right. I think there's also sangar in there to take a sangar, but I didn't mm. see it in the exceptions in this particular right. rule book I was accessing. Did you know that a four four seven, which suffers ELR, goes down to a three four six? Did you know that? Sure, I do know. Well, that's a fact. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. First line squads. Think about the first line. Oh, boy, three, four, six. Anyway, think, what are the stats on a first line squad? Firepower. Four. Three. Three is correct. <laughs> Just a three. Range. Four. Four. Four is correct. And their morale is a seven. 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 Yeah. What do they represent? in history in the Italian army, and I think it has like a feather in the hat kind of cap on the helmet and starts with a B. What's the name for those units in the Italian army? It starts with a B. Uh, Boyardi. Yes, it's Boy the Chef Boyardi's Versailles. Versa Versa yeah. Which were light infantry transported by trucks and motorcycles and or bicycles. And a 347, which suffers a ELR failure, is replaced by a conscript and not a lower quality first line squad. So are there two quality first line squad? While a conscript squad, the battle hardens, becomes a 346. So I'm going to have to get out the tray, yeah, yeah, tray right. over That's there. That's just what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm going to go gonna home do. and tiptoe yeah, through I'm my gonna, Italians. I'm do it. So surrender. Now, you may have heard that there could be a plus one close combat dino modifier for a capture attempt of a squad. You know, okay, close combat. I just want to kill him. You just roll the dice. But mm -hmm. if you want to capture him, yes. you have to add a plus one. Right. Does that apply versus non-elite Italian defenders? <laughs> Where are you getting these questions? Right out of rule 25.63. <laughs> wow. Against elite? No, non -elite. no, not elite. Oh, non elite. I will yes. say yes. It does. Yes. So, therefore, it's easier to capture them. Right. Yeah. Once captured, no Italian unit will attempt to escape. That's just a fact. Yeah, that, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. It was one of those arguments that were being made about the Italian army. Right. That LFT made a good case for. Mm -hmm. Yes. And other yeah, absolutely. Plans, but Lax units. Are non-elite Italian units lax? I'll say yes. Yeah, I think so. Yes is correct. Yeah. And do they use laxatives? <laughs> Only as necessary. Only yeah. as that is correct. They use as directed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Which is really good. Good of them. <laughs> kind of rule followers. Yeah. Um, and Patsy. For those of you who don't call it a patsy, because that's a I call local, it a pizza. Some people call it a 
P A A T C. Oh yeah, when I was in in Europe and I yes. got all these pictures at the Hartenstein Museum, uh, the one by the Hartenstein Museum, of all the weapons from World War II. Oh, I would, I would take the pictures and text them to Dave, send them to Dave <laughs> Timmon, and what weapon is this? <laughs> you know, you'd have to try to remember Panzer Faust, Panzer yeah. Trek, Piat. You know, and it, it was a lot of fun. Hmm. What what machine gun type is this? <laughs> Do Italians have to pass a pre? I don't even know what Patsy stands for. Pre armor, pre advanced, pre armor advanced test 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 armor test. attack test. Oh well, to attack a tank in close combat, do they have to pass a Patsy? Yes. Yes. yes and non elite Italian troops, they must pass a. Is it a one Patsy or a, a normal Patsy? Um, non elite. I think they have to pass a uh, kidney stone. <laughs> It's because of all those legs. <laughs> yes. I'll say a one. Yeah, it's a one. Yep. Now, there have been exceptions to a lot of those rules I just read. Oh, great. It's Eritreans. So mm -hmm. the Eritrean units are treated as Italian. And these are units that came out in Soldiers of the Nagos yes. long ago. Long from ago. Critical hit. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Dave Timmon and I played all, that was his first series with me. Mm -hmm. um, and now they are issued now with the new. With the, yeah, Halloween. Yeah, yeah. the reissue. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Too many games. Too many. So our return units are treated as Italian, except, as stated otherwise here, the Eritrean 347 squads and their 137 half squads that suffer ELR failure are replaced by a second line MMC, not a conscript, and become fanatic when they battle hard. An Eritrean first line MMC, and one which suffers ELR failure, is disrupted. So are the Eritreans also lax? I'm going to say no, if I remember that. I will say no. No is correct. Yes. And... Do they use lactose? <laughs> they don't need to. No. That's right. They have a no. good fiber diet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. High fiber. <laughs> and must they pass a one patsy or a normal patsy? Uh, um, normal patsy. Normal. normal is correct. Yes. So, can wow. heat of battle transform an Eritrean MMC into an Italian MMC? No. 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 Or vice versa? No. No. Can ELR replacement transform an Eritrean MMC to an Italian MMC? Yes. No. No. <laughs> or vice versa? Yes. No. <laughs> I'm tired of saying no. Right. I'm just yes. going, I'm going to stick with yes. Okay. Well, then you'll like this next question. Okay. All right. <laughs> Finnish units on to defend. On to defend. The Finnish personnel right up there. I should have moved my yes. Macapale painting behind me. Um, Finnish personnel. They may attempt to self-rally during any rally phase, and they are immune to cowering. Isn't that the coolest? It is. Are there conscript squads also attempt self-rally and immune to cowering? No. No is correct, no. John. Oh, but that wasn't I just made that question up because the next one's supposed to be yes. Oh, yes. I just took an exception. I saw okay. the page and I made it into a question on the spur of the moment. So very actually, impressive. The next very impressive. Question is supposed to be: Are elite Finnish squads stealthy? No. Yes. <laughs> are the first line Finnish squads? I hope stealthy? people are listening and learning, taking notes, then scratching stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Jeff said yes. Oh no, it's no. <laughs> Scratch that. So how about those first first line Finns? Stealthy? Are they stealthy? Finns. Uh yes, I think so. Yes. Yes. Are the Finnish yes, elephants one. that move through bamboo? No. Do they are they stealthy? <laughs> Finnish elephants. Yes. Of course they are. No, because it's the bamboo. It's crunchy. Uh, oh, right. crunchy, crunchy bamboo. Why didn't yeah, we I think know of that? that. Yeah, right. I thought that Finnish bamboo was the soft kind. Are con conscript thin squads 
stealthy. No. No, no, no. Now, did you know that all Finnish units are ski capable? Yes. I think I did know that. No, you did not know it. You're both lying. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Leaders. Oh, yeah. I've known that for years. <laughs> yes, they all are, even the conscripts, because, you know. They're all born with skis. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We're we going with them. Rule 25.71. Leaders, Finnish units usually take a less severe leader loss morale check or leader loss, loss fast check. Mm -hmm. The most severe being a one morale check or one task check. But why? Why don't they take a two morale check if they have a, a seven? Eight, a nine, nine, two leader? Because there is no nine, nine, two leader. That is correct. <laughs> That is correct. Oh, it's a trick question. Trick question. <laughs> That's right. One per night. There it is. Yes. We can relax now. <laughs> Finnish leaders have a unique rank structure descending in order as follows. 10 neg 1, 10 0, 9 neg 1, 9 0, 8 0, and an 8 plus 1. Hmm. That is another fact. Hmm. Are Finns eligible for field promotion? Well, what is field promotion? Do you remember? Uh, rolling uh, snake eyes in melee. That is correct. And then yes. you can get a leader. Get a better. Yes. Leader. yes. But that is only on Tuesdays. So you're wrong. In addition to deploying normally, a squad may deploy without a leader by passing a one task check instead of a normal. That's just true. And then is a leader required in order to recombine two half squads into a squad? Do you yes. need a leader to do that? For Finns? No. For Finns. No. No. They get oh. re recombined. Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Battle hardening. Finished leaders. Teaching moment. Battle hardened and are replaced according to that unique finish rank structure we saw. Mm -hmm. The A plus one leader cannot be replaced and therefore disrupts. Mm hmm. The progression for all Finnish MMC subject to replacement is shown on that chart I read. All Finnish MMC that battle harden follow the reverse order, of course, yeah, going up. Going up. <laughs> and a Finnish first line MMC that battle hardens becomes fanatic. And an unarmed Finnish MMC that becomes rearmed is replaced with a conscript of its size. Unarmed, so yeah, they mm -hmm. pick up the weapons with that more right. one hex. Thing. Yeah. Are Finnish troops sissies? Yes. Can we say sissy anymore? Well, depends on your pronunciation. You yeah. mean sissy? <laughs> that would be the word. Oh, sissy. S I S S I. Remember that? Oh. Term? What are the stats of a CC squad, the highest squad of the Finnish army? Seven or eight? Eight. Okay. Firepower. Ooh, eight firepower. Remember, these came out with the Germans. Yes, right. The new. The old, the first Piano right. Yeah. Remember? Mm -hmm. So eight, eight five eights. Close. Submachine guns. Oh. Rifles. Eight, eight, two, eight, eight four eights. eights. Closer. Three eights. Eight three eights. Eight three eights. Just like the German uh, right. the assault engine. Okay. Right. Okay. And they have a 338 half squad. So are the CC elite units? Yes. Yes, they're considered elite. Were they handpicked and specially equipped? Well, sure. Yes, it says that right in the rule. Yes. So it's a rule. Were they yeah? Were they sitting on a tree in an orchard when they were handpicked? Um <laughs> I know that's a hard one. Because yes. they're handpicked. It was like yes. they had to be somewhere. I think it was a hollow tree. It probably. Probably. Well, so can the Finnish first line use flamethrowers and DCs as if they're elite? Yes. Yes, they can. Very good. Um, captured equipment. Finnish personnel may use Russian machine guns, and Russians can use the Finnish machine guns without capture use penalties. May a Finnish elite and first line MMC use a Panzerfaust as if they were Germans? Yes. yes. Yes, they may, because they're giving them lots of those. Right. Except, as noted otherwise, the availability of the Panzerfaust begins when? I don't expect anyone to know this. The Finnish Panzerfaust available in? From the Germans in what year? How about year? Let's do 
44. You are correct. That's what I was thinking, June of 44. And that's that's darn close, 744. Okay. Yeah. And the range is only one hex away. Oh. Yeah. Type. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, but now a unit making a final Panzerfaust check, die roll, less than or equal to two, has a Panzerfaust and an opportunity to fire it, just like all Panzerfaust. All non-date dependent fire. <laughs> Panzerfaust check die rolls apply normally to them, and the total number of their shots in any scenario cannot exceed how many? I wouldn't expect to know either, but usually it's like equal to the squad, to squad one and a half right. or double. Right. But for Finns, it's special. No, it's one no. of those three. Oh, it's one per squad. One and a half. One and a half. Oh. Mm hmm. Late in the war, I guess the Germans yeah, were not really right. giving okay, them yeah, around. It, it is because it's part of it. And then the Panzer Shrek. Now, Finnish personnel can only use a Panzer Shrek in scenarios set in, well, we kind of did that, like 44 or 45. Do Finnish second line and green conscript personnel use all Panzer Shreks with captured use penalties? Do the really lowest of the Finns have to use captured use for those Shrekers? That kind of makes sense. Yeah, yes, we'll yes they yes. do. OBA. Finnish OBA batteries, they have a draw pile, pile of six black and three red chips. And then they can vary by the year. So you want to check that on your list. And lastly, do Finnish ordnance use red or black to hit numbers? Black. I would have thought so. But black. Red, it says. Really? Yeah. I thought, yeah, trained by the Germans. Yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. Stuff. So. They've been fighting forever. Right. But it says red. And that is... I refuse to play that. <laughs> play it that way. I'm that sure. is the nationalities of the Italians and the Finns. Ay caramba. No, Rancho... Rancho Cucamonga. Cucamonga. Yeah, yes. that's right. So I guess that'll be a show, huh? I'd call it. All right. Let's wrap it up. Mike, yes. thanks for coming by. Always happy to be here. It's always great to have you. Thank you. And remember to roll low. And rally well. Except when you're playing, not when you're us. playing us. What if we're all playing each other? That's still us. Oh, wait. How does that work? Oh, man, oh, you're making it more complicated. Yeah. Three of us. Sure. I guess. What if two of us? I guess if there's an SSR.